Hi, my name is Rebecca Lee, and I co-wrote this book right here, The Mercury Detoxification Manual, with Andy Cutler, PhD, who I always say when I do one of these videos, should have got the Nobel Prize for what he figured out. Of course, he said that when it finally becomes common knowledge, some doctor somewhere will take probably take credit for it. Anyway, I'm recording this at my place in Jamaica. The internet, the internet up here is terrible, so later I will drive into Port Antonio and upload this video to YouTube at the public library. It won't take 48 hours. They've stopped installing the roof on my house, so it's quiet again. If you would like to read my blog about Jamaica, go to robinhoodguesthouse.com. So I've been plugging away at this online course called, uh, uh, based on the Mercury Detoxification Manual. I have got to the final video script, which I've called, so far anyway, What About My Family? It is based on the last chapter in the book called Does Your Child Need to Chelate Too? Annie once told me that you can recognize other mercury toxic people because you find you really like them. Even now, I'm pretty much done, even now that I'm pretty much done with detox, I find this to be true. You recognize them across a crowded room. After looking at hundreds and hundreds of hair tests, maybe thousands even, Andy came to the conclusion that toxic people are attracted to other toxic people and get married. The susceptibility is genetic, but there is also this weird affinity thing going on too. Mercury symptoms affect the personality, and toxic people are attracted to personality traits in other toxic people. So if your child is toxic, and your, your, you and your spouse probably are too, and probably all your other children would benefit from a little chelation, even if they are neurotypical. And take a good look at your circle of friends. This was not something Andy discussed a whole lot. He was an engineer, and this realization probably took him somewhat out of his comfort zone. And since the outright verifiable science behind chronic mercury poisoning is ignored and sneered at, I figure he felt he was in a territory that was weird enough as it is without going into areas that sound really off the wall. I have observed with some horror what I can see is outright mercury symptoms in little children that people are missing completely. Or they say things like, oh, isn't that cute how she walks on her toes or flaps her hands. It occurred to me that people are not putting two and two together about mercury poisoning in children as opposed to what we see in adults. The chronic problems in kids are caused by the same thing. It just looks different in kids. This is why I asked Andy to write a chapter on this for the detox manual. It's the last chapter in the book, and it was the last thing he wrote before he died. He worked really hard on it. He cared about this a lot. He tired himself out doing it, and soon after he died of a heart attack. The first subject he covers is childhood dentition on page 151 to 152. There are charts you can look at that show when your baby's teeth should come in and fall out. If your child's teeth are coming in late, something is wrong. Andy says, if anyone tell you, tells you it's normal, it's nothing to worry about, some kids are just like this, they're wrong. It can be caused by low thyroid. Mercury and lead both impair thyroid function. The second thing he covers is a timeline of developmental milestones on pages 152 to 155. These are things like smiles back at you at two months or at 14 months walks with assistance. If a child misses several of these milestones, it's usually mercury and or sometimes some other toxic metal. At the well baby visits, your doctor is supposed to, your doctor is supposed to be filling out growth charts. On page 156 to 157, Andy explains how to use these charts to figure out if your baby is developing properly or if something is interfering. The next topic he covers on page 157 to 158, he called medical diagnoses. If your child has any of these, then trial chelation. These are autism spectrum disorders, ADHD or social communication disorder, epilepsy, mood instability, schizophrenia, OCD, depression, anorexia, bulimia, anxiety, dyslexia, sensory integration disorder, convergence insufficiency, accommodative insufficiency, strabismus, lazy eye, need for vision therapy as diagnosed by a doctor, 
asthma, terrible allergies, dangerous food allergies, and hypothyroidism. The next topic he covers on page 158 is about food and diet, red cheeks and behavior changes after dinner, self-limiting the diet, sensitivity and behavior changes, changes after eating food colorings, gluten intolerance and celiac disease, only wanting to eat sweets and starches, gassy and bloated after meals, frequent stomach aches and needing to be on any kind of special diet. I think this covers half of the whole population of children nowadays. Finally, on page 158 to 168, 61, he does a section he calls common sense, and this is what he says. The genes that control your child's development are the same that controlled his ancestors' development. His ancestors nursed, played, learned, grew, and matured in a consistent pattern from the Stone Age through, the, through ancient and biblical times, through the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, the Industrial Revolution, the last century right up until now. Normal, healthy development has been crucial to the survival of our species for thousands of years, and it's clear almost all children will develop normally if nothing interferes. If a child is not developing normally, it should ring alarm bells regarding toxicity. He then lists a long list of cues to watch out for, including other people act like or tell you that your child is weird, needs evaluation, can't behave, or so forth. People insinuate that your children are spoiled because of poor parenting and lack of discipline. Or, for instance, your child has needed antibiotics more than three times by age six. Or, your child has a high-pitched, nasal, flat, or odd voice. There are many, many more. If you suspect that something suspicious is going on with your child, read this chapter. Also, as Annie pointed out, you have nothing to lose by trialing some chelation with them. If mercury is causing a problem, your child will get better, he says in the detox manual. If it's not mercury, nothing will happen. In conclusion, he asks the parents to trust their instincts. A parent, particularly the mother, is far more sensitive to her child's state than any doctor can possibly be. Most doctors don't study child development any more than a parent nowadays anyway. So if you think something is wrong with your child after reading this section, try chelation. In a few weeks, it will become very clear if your child needs to chelate. Because this video may go all over the place, I'm going to emphasize here that he meant trial his protocol. Don't try anything other than the Andy Cutler protocol, also known as the Half-Life protocol or ACC protocol. Do not follow any protocol that is suggested by anybody if it strays from the basic rules he designed to keep you or your child safe. Detoxing a powerful toxin like mercury is no joke. And there are always ways to do it, and there are ways to do it safely and ways where you will make your child worse. The Andy Cutler protocol is the most conservative way to detox your child from mercury, and it's the one you should follow. Also, the sooner you chelate a child, the better. It gets world, worlds harder when they reach puberty and have minds of their own and won't listen to you anymore. So please share and like and do all these things you're supposed to do with these online videos. And I've included a few links that I hope you will find helpful.